Well, today's film is the first of a trilogy of films which I did uh, a few weeks ago and it involved me going to two of Scotland's most scenic glens, absolutely beautiful places up in the Northwest Highlands. And although this is a trilogy, the middle the middle film is actually just going to be one of my shorts. It should be out on Sunday with the final film out uh, a week today, next Wednesday. And it's just been yeah, it's such a great experience at this time of year as well. I've just had such a great time up there. So, without further ado, we'll head to me in my car. I've driven all the way up about three and a half hours to the end of this remote glen and the start of the walk. And here I am explaining where I am. Just when you think Scotland can't get even more stunning, you come to areas that, well, I've been here once before, and I'll come on to that story later on, it's uh, rather amusing. Well, it's amusing now, but yes, yeah, so I've been to this area once before, and it's been a few years since I've been back, and just when you think the scenery, you've seen it all, and it can't get any more beautiful, you come somewhere like this, and it's just, the beauty, just even on the drive up the, the Glen has been amazing, absolutely beautiful. So I've, uh, I've driven up virtually to the, the road end. This is actually a private road, and you have to get access. I'm in the Glen Strathfara, which is a bit of a strange name. So Glen and Strath kind of mean the same thing. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go into that in more detail in a wee while. So I'm in Glen Strathfara, and I've come right to the end, uh, almost to the, the dam. And that's where this walk starts, and I'm heading up quite a remote hill today. And the drive up this glen has just been beautiful. There's been the, the birch trees, that kind of luminous green you get at this time of year, and old pines and snow-capped mountains. Absolutely stunning. So I'm hoping, as I go up this walk, there'll be more of that, and the views will open up along the loch and what have you. So uh, without uh, hanging about and gabbering too much, I better get cracked on because I need to get back out of this before the, the gatekeeper goes away at 7 o'clock. Right, let's go. So I got myself ready outside the car, which was parked at the end of the glen, and saddled the backpack and set about heading out and up the road to start the walk. And it wasn't too long before something of interest stopped me in my tracks. Ah, look at this. So well, this... Uh, yeah, this walk starts literally at this dam, Loch Muna, and it's an arch dam. And although it's not that big, it's quite impressive. And it's actually the biggest arch dam, or this type of dam, in Britain. I just wonder how much water it's holding back. But I'm really looking forward to heading over and seeing what the loch looks like in the scenery. But as I said, this is right at the start of the walk, so it's a nice, uh, nice start to it. Lovely. Some feat of engineering, anyway. Right, I've only done about two minutes from the car, so I need to... <laughs> I need to stop looking at these sort of things and get up the hill. Right, let's go. A Land Rover track takes you round the side of Loch Monar, and before long you drop down to East Monar Lodge. And it's quite a bit of a walk in to the start of the hill, it's about five or six kilometres, but the scenery is beautiful. And once you're past the lodge, the track becomes narrow and into a footpath, and you head through a, a narrowing at the top of which you're greeted with an amazing view. Wow! That's a view, isn't it? Look at that! Fabulous! Well, I've just come up through a wee pass. Oh, my eyes are streaming, it's cold and windy. <laughs> I've just come up a wee ravine, and the views that have come down over Loch Monar here are just spectacular. I don't think I can actually quite see the hill I'm going up. I'm going along the side of the loch here for another couple of kilometres before heading north. But these views are great, I can see right down to, these are all very re remote mountains you can see surrounding this loch. And some of these ones here I think I did from Achna Schielich, and walked in and wild camped and what have you. Uh, I think she's gag, I, I can't remember how you pronounce it. Um, properly given the nickname of Cheesecake, but I think it's Ben she's, she's gag. <laughs> Somebody will be uh, ripping me to pieces at the moment for my pronunciations. <laughs> and then over to the left I think that's Ben Dronig, which we, we did in, a, in an outing with my brother a few years ago. Uh, so this is lovely. I've never seen, never seen this uh, this side of the loch. It's always nice when you see a new, a new view, essentially. So I'm going to stop here and take some snaps. Uh, I'm going to sit over here, get a bite to eat, and uh, take some photographs here because this is stunning. So I'm going to find this seat. <laughs> and the view certainly was stunning. So I got a wee seat, got the camera out, and took a few snaps down Loch Monar. It was fabulous. Thank you. 
after taking a few photographs, it was time to get cracked on. I still had a long way to go and to get back, especially as the gate was closing at the end of the road. And you can see right across places like the Monarch Forest and over to the Attadale Forest and beyond, and a lot of these Munros which had been up it brought back memories. And what a fantastically remote feeling place this was. Well, it's a bit of a walk into the bottom of this hill. I've just stopped here to uh, yeah, have a wee rest, have a bite to eat, <laughs> have my lunch, and uh, a wee river. And you see, the thing about this river, you don't know how, I don't know if you can make out how green it is. It's almost as green as my jacket, all this algae flowing down it. It's a lovely wee spot to uh, to stop, and um, this is this is the base. Yeah, this is the base of the hill. The hill climbs up behind me now. It's probably about... There were another three and a half kilometres to the top and six, 600 metres ascent. And the hill's called Anshian. It's a it's a corbett, it's 814 metres. But it really does feel remote here. You, you have to uh, earn your socks even to get to the base of it. It's taken me about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to walk around the, uh, the, around the loch and get to here. But you know what? That walk has been fantastic. The views are just spectacular. I don't know if you can make it out. I don't know if you'll see it over my shoulder. The, the higher mountains still have a cap of snow or fresh snow overnight that's fallen and the blue sky so it's just it's just a beautiful beautiful walk even just to get to the base of the hill but I'm going to shut up now I'm going to stop talking and get walking as I say because <laughs> I need to get to the top and I need to get back out of here before 7 I need to get all the way down Glen Strathfar or to the gate because the gatekeeper locks that gate at 7 and if I don't make it by then I'm locked in <laughs> so I better get a shifty on Right, let's go. And get a shift the on, I certainly did. And it wasn't long before I was starting to head uphill towards An Shihan, the hill of the fairies. We best know I'm going up there. Although we were only a month away from the longest day of the year in June, the forecast had suggested northerly winds, and this was the first snow shower I encountered. I kind of hoped it was going to blow through, but as it got heavier and heavier, it was time to stop and get the waterproofs on and the gloves on and wrapped up against the cold, cold wind that was blowing. And it wasn't light snow either, it wasn't settling, because the ground's kind of warm at this time of year, but it was cold enough to feel like winter, and that's for sure. Oh, well you can see the sun's out again but I don't know if you can make out over my shoulder for the last sort of 20 minutes I've been blasted by a wee snowstorm that came in and it always reminds me of a saying my mum used to say she used to say never cast a clout till May be out and I did a wee video about this uh, a few weeks ago and that was in April or well into May now and it just shows you Winter can make a return on the Scottish hills at any time, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of glad that has blown through now. And I'm making my way up the hill, but the views behind me, I might just come back down this way, because the views, when the cloud clears, are stupendous. Anyway, time to get to the top of Anne Sheehan. Let's go. Woo! To say the weather was fluctuating would be an understatement. One minute it was a blizzard, the next minute the sun was out. But you could always tell when the next shower was going to come in as the mountains to the north were veiled under a curtain of grey. Dark and foreboding it looked too. So there's a snow shower blowing in. I'm about, probably about 100 metres vertically from the summit. And another kilometre to go. And these showers just blasting in short, sharp, wintry showers. And in between them there's a wee bit of sunshine, so I get cold. And then when the sun comes out, I get warm. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know why I'm doing this piece of camera, I'm just blethering a lot of nonsense. Maybe uh, just trying to waste time while this snow shower blows through. <laughs> anyway, it's adding a little bit of... Yeah, extra to the day, shall we say. Right, stop waffling, Murray. Let's get to the top of this hill. Still a long way to get by. And I can see the summit. It's just over there. 
Ooh, bloody raw. It's a long way, a long way into this one. So that's a welcome sight indeed. Right, another 10 minutes I think and I'll be there. Woo. Oh, am I glad to see the summit of this one. The top of Ayan Shazan. And it's a really remote, well, it feels really remote, uh, hill uh, right at the top of Glen Strathfarron, the Loch Boner behind me. And one of the good things about coming up hills, once you get into hill walking for a bit longer, once you go up hills you don't know, one of the good things is you start to pick up the peaks you've been on and you can remember the adventures that that were had, had on these hills. For instance, over here, the next hill over, is the Monroe myself and my brother had the ill-fated wild camp on where the tent nearly blew away and basically got ruined in high winds as we uh, did a wild camp on a, on a shoulder high up in the mountain and the forecast wasn't quite, well, well, the weather wasn't quite as forecasting. I'll put a wee link somewhere to that video. And then over here, you've got the mountains of Glen Strafara, the Strafara 4, and there's an amusing story. I can laugh about it now that I, I mentioned earlier on, but I'll, I'll maybe share that with you later on as we're heading back down towards the car. And then behind me we've got the, uh, the, 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 the hills that I talked about as well, Lord Moore and Shazgeg and Ben Dronig. And that was an amazing adventure I had as well, wild camping. And then further around you've got the Malarda Hills, just with a nice coating of snow on top of them. So, Anyway, it's a long way from the, uh, the car and I need, to get, I need to get back down here because I need to get back to the gate at the bottom of Glen Strafara before it's locked. To, so as the, the, the gatekeeper can let me out, she uh, closes the gate at 7 and if I'm not down before then, then hell me in me, I'm going to be in trouble. So enough talking, let's get walking, I'm going to start the long walk back. Woo. It's not warm. This hill sits at the kind of head of Strathconan and Strath well, Glen Strathfarer and it feels really quite remote. I mean, this whole area, you know, the hills that you access from Achna Shealach, are a really remote feeling and you know you get a feeling of wilderness so it was time to head back down and those showers were still coming and going and the lock would every now and again disappear into the into the greyness as another snow shower blasted by and then the sun would come out it was it was fabulous it was typical scottish spring weather and I just came back down the way I'd gone up because the views were so good that I just thought it was a better way to go just to enjoy those views and I was I was heading back down through the gorge and I was soon passing Monar Lodge and back to the car in Glenstrathfarer. Thankfully I'd made good time and I was back in the car with plenty of time to spare to make sure I got back down Glenstrathfarer. Now is it a Glen or is it a Strath? Well, who knows? It's a bit of both, I suppose. Maybe that's where the name comes in. Anyway, back down to the gate, and I had to uh, disrupt the lady's... I uh, don't know if she was at her tea or watching the telly, but I do feel a bit sorry for her. She must be in and out of that uh, that house opening and shutting in that gate, <laughs> especially especially during the weekend. Anyway, she opened the gate, and I was off to pastures new and to another adventure which awaited me tomorrow. <laughs>